All right, Sketch Pad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. Look, man. So we're going to watch this Pierce Morgan talking to Tom McDonald, and he's talking to Talib Kweli. And you see the big difference between the two, and we're going to come back and discuss. Who raised you? Oh my god, this dude is so hard. That last bar was crazy. Oh my god. Uh, Children are too young to make those type of choices for themselves. You know, that's why they have parents. Oh, eat each other. What? Yo, I can't understand it neither. All right, man, Sketchpad, you know what it is, man. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. Look, man, link's on the screen if you want to donate. YouTube has completely demonetized us. We're still in the program, but for some reason, we're not getting paid our revenue. So we're watching, you're watching all these videos, and we're not getting paid. But y'all still donating, and that's all that matters. So look, man. We're going to um, let uh, Pierce Morgan speak his mind. He's going to talk to these two fellas. And then we're going to come back and discuss what we think and feel. So let's go. Pop gone woke. I spoke to Ben about his unlikely transformation into a rap heavyweight yesterday. And today I'm joined by the artist who actually crafted the song, uh, Tom McDonald. So, Tom, uh, well, first of all, congratulations on this runaway smash hit. Um, you are actually entitled to celebrate it because you are a bona fide rapper. Ben, I'm not quite so convinced by. Maybe a one-hit wonder. Um, first of all, are you surprised by the backlash or did you predict the backlash and that was one of the reasons you did the song in the first place? Uh, well, I've made a lot of sort of anti-woke anthems over the years and there's always a certain degree of backlash that comes with it. Um, so this one was sort of, you know, a, a lot of my relationship with the audience is call and response. I make a song, people respond in the way that they do, uh, and then I respond again with the next song. So, uh, you know, Facts with Ben is sort of the cap on a long line of anti-woke anthems that have been met with pretty heavy criticism. 12 a.m. Uh, in the, uh, the black rap community have come out and said that this is just blatant cultural appropriation racism because you're accusing all their music that they produce of being about selling drugs, pushing guns, stripper poles, turning our sons into thugs and so on. What do you say to that criticism? Um, I think that there's, you know, there's all types of rappers out there. There's, there's black rappers and white rappers and Asian rappers and Indian rappers, all types of rappers. And I don't think that uh, criticizing sort of the status quo of the genre or criticizing the prevalent content of the music. I don't, I don't, I don't agree that there's anything racist about that. What struck me is that there seems to have been more outrage over you guys lampooning uh, this style of rap music than there is about the actual rap music, which often to me gets an extraordinary pass from criticism. And I said to Ben yesterday, when you have John Legend rewriting Baby It's Cold Outside because it's so offensive, um, but doesn't rewrite any of the lyrics of any of his rap friends, there's an obvious double standard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that sort of in general, um, over the last 10 to 15 years, there's been uh, very prevalent themes in hip hop, you know, uh, sort of uh, objectifying women and 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 glorifying violence and romanticizing drug abuse and stuff like that and um i think that hip-hop likes to think of itself as quite a woke genre yeah. and uh none of those things seem to quite align with uh what the the woke mob um is is standing up and being vocal of again so i you know i think it, it, it's a little bit hypocritical but you know do you think you can be number one on the Billboard chart, or do you think you may get subtly shadow banned to stop you getting there? Uh, well, it's happened before. I've had Billboard refuse to count my album sales. 
Um, I'm completely independent. There's no record label. There's no distribution. There's no marketing team, nothing. I make all of my beats. I write all the songs. My girlfriend shoots the music videos, entirely independent of the music industry. Uh, so, you know, censorship, suppression, shadow banning, is very familiar with all of those things. Like I said, billboards refused to count my album sales before. They've removed me off trending charts on YouTube. Um, my distribution company, TuneCore, which is supposed to be the alternative for artists who don't want to sign a major record deal. They, they are supposed to be able to go to TuneCore and independently release their own music. Um, so I had TuneCore deny release of this song and say that they will not host it in any form uh, because of quote unquote lyrical content. Um, so, you know, I think, <clears throat> I think the buzz is there and I think the press is there and I think that the proof is in the pudding. I have access to the sales numbers as do many other people. Um, so I think it would be pretty hard for billboard at this point in time to just, uh, blatantly, um, snub us on the billboard charts. Can you make one promise finally, Tom, which is if you do get there, you don't make as part of your celebration a decision to do a whole a album with Ben Shapiro. I don't think any of us could stomach that. Probably I can absolutely make that promise. I can absolutely <laughs> make that promise. Uh, Tom, congratulations on the success. I love the record because I, I, I see what you're doing with it and I applaud you for it. It's sending up a lot of double standard and I think that's important. Uh, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Pierce. Okay, we heard from... All right, so let's, let's talk about that first and then we'll go on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Um, I think what Tom McDonald said is spot on. I think that I put it to you like this: Tom McDonald is what rap used to be, and he's speaking from a point of view of political. I would say more in the lines of of a uh, Chuck D. Fear the Black Panther, X Clan, and all those rappers back then who talked about issues that people were scared to talk about. The old Nas, Jay Z, like, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he's speaking on them. And what bothers most people about it is the fact that he's white and he's speaking on it. Mm -hmm. But what he said was the truth. You can't really put hip hop into this category as if not everybody if if not everybody that raps is black is rap is all over the world now yeah so him saying what he said was the truth and the cultural appropriation thing like y'all gotta stop that that's over with you want it rap to be where it's at today and look where it's at you can't say somebody cultural, cult, cult, culturally appropriating anything because we all take from something when it comes to music. And rap music took a lot from rock music, whether you like it or not. All the samples that y'all done used and made millions off of. Some of the hooks that y'all done used from, from musicians that wasn't rap. So it is what it is, but he's right, man. Yeah, um, to piggyback off of that, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree, man. Um, things to things today in general is just so hypocritical. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, uh, people just. They just hate Tom because he's speaking the truth, but he's not of color. That's just it. If he was of color and rapping the same thing, nobody would pay attention at all. Nobody would pay attention. Nobody would even care. But because he's not of color, that's why they're paying attention. You know what I'm saying? That's why they're paying attention. They don't want to say that, but that's exactly why they're paying attention. That's why they're trying to like shoot him down and not allow him to speak the truth. I had this conversation with with uh with a few people at my job. I was talking about Tom McDonald. And um I just I said, uh, why do you think you know he gets so much negativity? 
as far as his music when he speaks the truth. And, you know, they was like, well, he shouldn't be allowed to speak it because he ain't black. I was like, so what? I said, what? I said, what does the color of his skin have to do with what he's speaking of? It like the things that he speaks about affects everybody. It doesn't just affect blacks, it affects whites, it affects Mexicans, it affects everybody. He's speaking in general. He's generalizing everything. So it don't matter like what color you are. It affects what he says affects everybody, it touches everybody. You know, and I explained to them, I said, prime example, and I pulled out our YouTube page and I showed them. I was like, you see these comments that we get about reacting to his videos? Some of these comments don't even come from the United States, which show you that what he says does, just doesn't generalize here in the States. It just doesn't generalize to Blacks. It just didn't generalize to whites. It generalizes to everybody. Everybody's affected by what he says. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just go say, oh, he can't be allowed. He can say whatever he want. It's a free country, freedom of speech. You know what I mean? He's not saying anything wrong. What is he saying that's wrong? He was like, well, I'm not saying that he's saying anything wrong. I'm just saying that, you know, Oh, well, you know, he's, he's just speaking on things he shouldn't be speaking on because he's not black. I said, again, what does his race have to do with it? And it couldn't give me an answer. It couldn't give me an answer at all. So I said, what you're saying is that, so if I was black and I was speaking on issues that uh, Caucasian people go through, white people go through, well, uh, how do you think they will feel? And he was like, well, they probably will feel the same way. I said, how, how much you want to bet they probably won't? Because they probably won't even care. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm speaking on things that they're going through and they can relate to, you know what I'm saying? They're probably just going to agree with me like most of us agree with Tom or the people that like his music agree with. So it really don't matter. And then he just got quiet and walked away. So I was like, "Yeah, man, it's 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 all about when it comes to black people. It's all about who delivers the message. They don't really care about the message. The message could be, hey, listen, man, there's a million dollars down that street, and you got to get to it. You know what I'm saying? If if it's a white person saying that, they don't care. If it, they don't care, I'm not trying to hear it." You so you can't tell me that. You know what I'm saying? Because to them, <laughs> yeah. the message isn't as poor. The message coming from somebody is more important to them than it than the actual message. That's all they care about. But we're gonna keep this going. Let's go. Uh, Tom, but now let's hear from the hip hop establishment. Joining me now from New York is the highly respected rapper Talib Kweli, who also co hosts the Midnight Miracle podcast with Dave Chappelle, and the DJ and digital media mogul DJ Vlad. Well, a, a very high powered uh, panel to respond. So let me start with you then, uh, Talib. You and I have locked horns before on Twitter, as it used to be. Yeah, you used to troll um, me on Twitter. I think we both yeah. like to express ourselves forcefully, and uh, absolutely no problem in doing yes. that. What is, what is your objection yes. to this song? Well, first of all, um, forgive my voice because I'm coming off tour. My voice sounds a little scratchy. Forgive um, it. I sounds wanna pretty cool, Tom. OK, cool. I want to congratulate Tom uh, McDonald on his journey in sobriety um, because that's very important to note that part of his story is about his journey in sobriety. I do think it's very cowardly and very racist. I had to stop that because for you, you got to be a nasty motherfucker to say something like that. Like that's not, a, you're not congratulating somebody do, doing that. You being a smart ass because you're saying that you want to congratulate him on his sobriety, right? Not one time did Tom McDonald bring up, or it said, hey, listen, I, I've i been an addict and I recovered and I made this song. What does his sobriety have to do 
with what he was asked about the song. Pierce Morgan did not ask Tom McDonald about his drug addiction and drug recovery. He didn't ask him. Not one time. So how is you bringing that up? Like that just came out of left field. And that just tells you that he wants to tell, remind people that this guy used to be on drugs. Yeah. He was a drug addict. And look how he got off drugs. Yeah. But I had to say that before we go any further. So let's just keep going. To blame hip hop for his addiction, um, as if white people don't have addiction issues. Um, Twitter. I think we both yeah. like to express ourselves forcefully, and absolutely no problem in doing yes. that. What is what is your objection yes. to this song? Well, first of all, um, forgive my voice because I'm coming off tour. My voice sounds a little scratchy. Forgive um, it. I want to congratulate cool, Tom. Okay, cool. I want to congratulate Tom uh, McDonald on his journey in sobriety. Um, because that's very important to note that part of his story is about his journey in sobriety. I do think it's very cowardly and very racist to blame hip hop for his addiction, um, as if white people don't have addiction issues. That's for what? <laughs> Wait a fucking minute! Wait, man. Hey, hold on. <laughs> he never, he never blamed hip hop for anything. What are you talking about? What Did the I miss fuck? Something? <laughs> Did I miss something? Did he blame? Like I never heard him say nothing like that before. That's what crazy. Blame, what did he blame hip hop for? Like I never, I never even heard Tom McDonald say nothing like that before. You know what? Let's just let's just keep it going. Let me get him the benefit of the doubt. This is nuts. <laughs> what the fuck, bro? Come on, let's just go. From uh, Tom, and now let's hear from the hip hop establishment. Joining me now from New York is the highly respected rapper Talib Kweli, who also co-hosts the Mid. What is your objection yes. to this song? Well, first of all, um, forgive my voice because I'm coming off tour. My voice sounds a little scratchy. Forgive um, it. I want to congratulate cool, Tom. Okay, cool. I want to congratulate Tom uh, McDonald on his journey in sobriety um, because that's very important to note that part of his story is about his journey in sobriety. I do think it's very cowardly and very racist to blame hip hop for his addiction. Um, as if white people don't have addiction issues. That's first and foremost. But if we're going to talk about the song Facts uh, with Ben Shapiro, let's have a facts versus feelings conversation, which is something that Ben Shapiro always says. Mm -hmm. um, the hook of the song is this ain't rap, which I agree with. It's not rap. It's not hip hop. Has nothing to do with rap. Pierce, you're wrong. The song is not has nothing to do with rap. Um, this song, he says, money, cars, clothes. We ain't selling drugs. We ain't going to overdose. We ain't pushing guns. We're pro we ain't promoting stripper poles. We won't turn your sons into thugs and your daughters into hoes. This is not facts. He completely erased all conscious hip hop. You see, I got this shirt from Tribe Called Quest, one of the greatest rap groups of all time. He erased what I do. He erased what my, compa what my, what my people do. And uh, most of my friends don't rap about those things. Tom is lying about rap. Well, yeah, but hang on. Okay, all right. That... Yes, yeah, but hang on, hang on. All right, wait a minute, dog. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> wait the fuck up. Hold the fuck up, nigga. <laughs> wait a minute. Let me get this right. So, because he called out a certain category of hip hop, which we know there are plenty of rappers who talk about this goofy shit, even to this day. You're going to tell me that he completely erased your side of hip hop. This is how stupid this guy is, right? So let me get this right. Tom McDonald said, this is not rap, right? You said he acknowledged himself that this isn't rap, right? But this is how crazy it is. He's saying that all the stuff that the, the the what they call it uh uh the stereotypical things that people say about rap he's saying this is not rap this is not guns this is not clothes this is not bitches this is not stripper poles this is not this this is not that we ain't gonna turn your sons and daughters in this is not that he's basically saying like this is not that type of rap 
not that this isn't rap. This isn't that type of rap. This is about social and political issues. That's what this song is about. Mm -hmm. You take that and try to extrapolate it to your music and say, well, guess what? You erased everything that we do. No, stupid. He's agreeing with you because your music isn't that either. Mm -hmm. Just get ready to say that. Your music isn't that either, dummy. Child Call Quest didn't rap about that type of stuff. That's what he's saying. This is how stupid this guy is. I, you got something to say? Go ahead, bro. If not, then I'm just going to keep it going. Man, um, I'll wait, I'll wait till we're done. And then all I'll right, let's go. I, I'm also, I don't think he's saying all rappers do. In fact, he made a point of saying he doesn't mean all rappers or all hip hop stars. But there's well, no doubt, there's no doubt some on. do. There's he no made, doubt some he, do that. He stuff. made a point, of course, of course. And there's some country music artists and some heavy metal artists that participate in violent and sexual content. Mm. But I would never make a song. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't specify that he meant some rap in the song. He specified that on your show right. when you question him. But on the song, he's saying, I'm trying to be offensive and I, I'm hoping to upset people. So guess what? As a black man, black man who does hip hop, I'm offended. If you were trying to offend me, well, then you, could, you did a good job. To claim that rap or art is a cause of violence and or cause of uh, addiction in his life is irresponsible and hypocritical. When a bomb drops in a, in a nation, it falls on the just and the unjust. I watched a movie called Oppenheimer last night yeah. about a white man who made an atomic bomb that dropped on Japanese people because another white man genocided six million Jewish people. Killers of the Flower Moon is a movie about, a great movie about a white man, white men who go and, and, and pillage and steal from Native American people. Uh, yesterday, a Trump fan from Philly uh, de decapitated his father because his father was voting for Joe mm. Biden. That's like Vanilla Isis. You can't tell me that in the culture that he claims that he stands for, that there's no violence in sex. You can't tell me that. Anyone who supports Trump, like Tom McDonald does in his music, after Trump's mugshot, after January 6th, after this man has been indicted for rape and has 91 felonies, you can't tell me about Blue Lives Matter. You can't tell me that you're about wait law and order. This, wait a minute. Hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. You try to sneak something else in there. This has nothing to do with the song. What are you talking about? How did that, how did this come up? How? He trying to connect. Let's, let's keep it going, man. I want to end this. I'm not even going, I don't think we even going to get through this whole thing because it's pretty long, but I'm just going to let him finish out and then we just going to close out. You're being a hypocrite. Okay. Powerful words. Uh, DJ Vlad, you've been sitting there patiently. Uh, what do you make of all this? I mean... Tell him, would it be fair to say that hip-hop has moved to a, you know, for want of a better word, a better place, that it, it, the biggest stars no longer want to rap about stuff that caused all the offense, and actually it's changed. Is that is that accurate? See, see, I don't think that this should be a conversation with three white people and one black person about the state of hip hop and a referendum on hip hop. I think that's the wrong direction to go. One more thing I'm gonna say about Donald Trump is that Tom McDonald is an immigrant. Donald Trump just said immigrants are poisoning our blood here in America. Donald Trump uses uh, white nationalist re rhetoric from Mein Kampf and Hitler all the time, and this guy is a supporter of his. Yeah, this song on, is called Facts. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Mm -hmm. Listen, you can have your views about Donald mm -hmm. Trump, that's fine. And, and by the way, you can no, say... No, I said, I'm done, I'm done with that, I'm done with that. No. I'm done with that, that's why I was going to the song. I get it, but the idea that I'm not allowed to, or v DJ Vlad isn't allowed to, comment about hip-hop or rap is ridiculous. I didn't say that. I didn't he, say he that. basically said DJ it. DJ Vlad, that 
No, I didn't. Let me let me be clear. DJ Vlad is a controversial figure in our culture. A lot of people accuse him of being a culture vulture. That is not a, a criticism that I personally agree with, although I do understand the argument. I work with, if, if unbeknownst to a lot of people, I've done more songs with white rappers than any rapper you can name, any black rapper you can name. My next singles feature with Mac, uh, Mac Miller, Rest in Peace. I've worked with Mac Lamore. I've worked with Ari the Rugged Man. There's no problem with white people in hip hop. There's a problem with racist white people in hip hop. Mm. And Tom McDonald's song is racist and is factually incorrect. And I, could, and I could break down what's factually incorrect in the song Facts, and I could break down how Ben Shapiro started his career by saying, rap, rap isn't music. So you got somebody featured on your song who tweeted in 2019, fact, rap isn't music, and mm. if you think it is, you're stupid. Well, that person is clearly not an anti-racist, intelligent person. Tom McDonald owes the hip-hop community an apology for putting someone on a song that in 20, 2009, writing for a white nationalist uh, site, Breitbart, wrote an article saying rap is crap. These people don't respect hip-hop. Tom McDonald's making rap for people Well, who I think you're missing... Like uh, look, I, I played some of this stuff back to Ben Shapiro yesterday. I think you're slightly missing the point. He's, he's lampooning the world of rap and hip-hop. Oh, you I'm think not missing the point. You think, there's a, the you think there's a lot of hypocrisy I, I'm, and double standard clear. there? I, I'm very clear that Ben Shapiro is is lampooning hip hop. I'm very clear about mm. that. I'm not I'm not under any but misconception about But even you, Tanner, look, this. even you must admit when mm -hmm. John Legend goes out of his way to rewrite the lyrics to mm -hmm. "Baby It's Cold Outside" because of the Me Too mm -hmm. campaign, because he he thinks it's about sexual assault, but doesn't rewrite mm -hmm. any lyrics from any hip hop or rap song in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. You got to admit there is a ridiculous mm -hmm. double standard there, isn't there? I totally I couldn't I couldn't disagree more. I completely disagree. Really? With that because I think you're removing all I think you're removing all social, political and historical context that goes into creating hip hop and equating it with the social political context that you goes into creating a Christmas You genuinely think baby is cold outside is is more offensive than anything that the I didn't say that. Let, well, you I implied it. I didn't say that. I said no, I didn't imply it. I said you are removing context to make a false equivalency. No, the context is very straightforward. Miss, Miss John Cole. Legend chose to rewrite the lyrics to Baby It's Cold no, Outside. I, I understand. But he didn't Pierce, rewrite Pierce, any Pierce. of the offensive, misogynist, violent Pierce. lyrics of his friends in the rap world. Pierce, I get, I get that that's how you feel, but your feelings are It's not a facts. feeling, it's a fact. And the facts is... Oh, no, that's not... Well, it's, it's not a fact that it's a it's problem. It's a fact that, that John Legend that. hasn't rewritten any lyrics of people in the hip-hop world. And it's not a... Pierce Morgan, John Legend is not your slave. He doesn't have to do what He's you He's not my slave, but he can be a hypocrite. <laughs> and he then, was. Then, 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 then let's he... stop talking about John Legend, because... What? <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> I gotta stop it right there. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> what? <sighs> Nigga, what? Did you just say... Yo, I'm gonna tell you one thing that I noticed. This is the reason why Talib can't talk to nobody. He's very nervous. You can hear it in his voice. He's very, very nervous. Because you know why, Van Fang, you know what? <clears throat> I'm gonna end it right there. I don't I don't really know what, what else is what else. let's just see what else they say and then we're gonna end it. This is not about John Legend. Let's no, talk about you, the song facts. All right, but you let's stop deflecting. I'm stop not deflecting, deflecting and let's talk about the song facts. Okay. Okay, so can we get back to Hang the song on. facts? I mean, let me okay, bring in DJ first, Vlad. He's been very lyric. Uh, Tyler, there's, there's three okay. of us here. Let me bring in okay. DJ Vlad. You apparently... We just want to end it there. Um, hold on. Let me pause that. Man, look, man. That was that was a, a train wreck. Yeah, that was brutal. <laughs> this guy cool. said, John Legend, John Legend isn't your slave. Like, what? 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 What is that? That's crazy to say. The nigga said John Legend isn't your slave. Like, do you understand how how disrespectful that is? Like, to you saying, so you sit here and you say that this man, Tom McDonald, is a racist because he's pointing out the things that hip hop artists like you point out. Because Talib, at one point, talked about rappers who talked about things that, that he's talking about. Right? Mm -hmm. That's one. Two, <clears throat> you're not going to sit here and tell me that hip-hop doesn't have uh, 
different uh, subgenres within the same genre. Hardcore hip hop, street hip hop, uh, uh, all types of different hip hop. How many songs you got? A there's songs called. They got songs about drugging people. They got songs about killing people. They got songs about uh, throwing your guns at people. Holes, money, clothes. Jay Z got a song called Money Cash Holes. Uh, Honest got a song called uh, Throw Your Guns in the Air and Buck Buck Like You Just Don't Care. And like it's been always, always for a long time, it's been that way. So for mm-hmm. someone to put it at the forefront, you have a problem with it. But when he asks you, how come John Legend isn't writing? The rewriting the lyrics from some of these rap songs that you know for a fact that is bad. And you try to deflect and say, well, well, he's not your slave. What do you mean? He said that there was a song that's, that Baby is Cold Outside is offensive. So he's going to rewrite the song, but he's not rewriting some of the songs of rap music that's offensive. I don't I just don't understand that. I don't get that part. And then on top of that, you said Ben Shapiro said rap rap isn't music, right? So let me get this right. Back in 2009, Ben Shapiro said rap wasn't music, right? That's how he felt. But that doesn't make him racist because there's a lot of people who are not racist who feel like rap music isn't music. There are a lot of black people who feel like rap music isn't music. A whole lot of black people. I remember when Dionne Warwick had, I believe at an airport or somewhere, she had a steamroller roll over all hip hop music, all the CDs that year. This isn't music. I didn't know that. Yes. She hated hip hop music. So for you to say that, uh, that, uh, he's racist, but the best part about it is people change, right? People change and people start to listen more and they start to change and they get it. Either they like it or they don't. You're telling me that you're going to hold his feet to the fire because of something he said back in 2009, 2009 dog. We're in 2024. Maybe he didn't know about it then. Maybe he listened to something. Maybe he got it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, guess what? I'm sure that I'm sure you could point out things that you didn't like back in the day. Right? I mean, plenty of stuff. And you changed on it, right? So we could got to give him a pass. So I'm saying it doesn't make him racist. He's just saying that hip hop to him wasn't music back then because he's he what he does is something different. But again, there's a lot of musicians who feel that way about hip hop. There's a lot of black people who feel that way. Are you going to say that they're they're not black either? Yeah. He's this guy. This guy Talib Kweli. This guy is a joke. He's a joke, and he's always been a joke. You know what I'm saying? He's a pretty yeah. good rapper. I ain't gonna lie about that. But he's a joke. As a person, he's a joke. You saying stuff. I'm just going to say this and then I'm going to let you go and we're going to end this. He's saying a bunch of stuff that separates people. I'm never going to be for that. I'm all about us being together. But he keeps on with his rhetoric trying to separate people. He can say whatever he want. You can't criticize one side by calling them racist by being a racist. You can't do that. You can't say these people are racist and you're the racist too. I don't see you with any solution. I told you before about these people. They never had no solutions. It's always problems. Oh, blah, 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 blah. But they never had no solution. So it is what it is. But he's a certified clown. Well, go ahead, bro. Uh, I'm trying to figure out why you know what I mean? Um, why is he saying this song is racist? This song is is not is far from being racist. 
it's a song. The whole song facts itself is far from being racist. I'm gonna tell you why before you go. The reason why he's saying the song is racist is because he connected uh, Tom McDonald to Donald Trump, mm-hmm. and he's saying that Donald Trump is a racist. So by default, since Donald Trump is a racist and Tom McDonald likes Donald Trump, he's a racist. So this song is racist. That's basically mm-hmm. what he's, he's trying to. That's what he. That's why he kept talking about Donald Trump because. He wanted to connect Donald Trump to the song. So he's like, oh, well, and I could debunk all this stuff. But go ahead, man. Yeah, so he's like, he's 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 making claims about this record that is not true. And then he's making claims about Tom McDonald that is not true. You know what I'm saying? Uh, for him to say that um, Tom McDonald is, is discrediting in that genre of rap is talking about you know what i'm saying you're not talking about those things so he's actually giving y'all props and then for you to say uh that that dj vlad and um the other guy like you know don't have don't have rights to speak on certain things come on now come on now a lot of times when people don't speak on certain things, then nothing gets into motion. If if if, if you made a song and then you wanted people to, you wanted it to go viral, you gotta get people talking. You gotta get people interested in the record. To me, it's a form of promotion. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I'm talking about this record, that means I actually have some interest in it. You know what I'm saying? So I don't, I don't get, I don't get what he's talking about. It doesn't make any sense to me. You know what I mean? Of course, you know, I, res- I think he's a dope rapper. You know what I'm saying, uh, Talib. But I feel like his, his, his theories, whatever he's talking about, he has not, he not, has not the slightest clue. You know what I mean? At all, at all, he has not the slightest clue. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. I think he's suffering uh, from uh, what they call Trump derangement syndrome, man. That's it. Yeah, but but man, can we for once, people? Can we just get off of that? If if somebody want likes Trump and wants to vote for Trump, that don't make them a racist. For God's sake, man! Like, what are we? What are we doing here, man? Like, it's annoying, man. Every single time, every single time we turn around and we talk about something, it's some guy saying, oh, you vote for Trump, or you're a racist. So I'm racist by default because I like what this guy's talking about over here. Come on, man. Like, Yeah, it's, it's, it's gotten to that point, man. It's like everybody is a racist if you like certain side. And after this election, then it will be something different. But it is what it is, man. Sketch pad, we out of here. See y'all. Good night, everybody. Bye.